Well, let's talk security now. The National Security Ministry has withdrawn all of its men stationed at the Tema Harbour. The ministry says it is reassigning these officials to address the threat of terrorism and violent extremism as the Kanka begins to surge across West Africa. Joy News is learning that this directive took effect on May 3, 2020, following an official notice uh, by the National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa. So let's bring you a breakdown of the reasons being uh, given by the National Security Ministry uh, on this matter. Uh, it first of all talks about the fact that um, there is a need to withdraw all of its operatives from the Temahabo effective 3rd of May 2022. Now the decision, first of all, is in response to calls uh, by the economic management team for the rationalization of the number of security agencies involved in physical inspection at the ports, giving the ongoing operations by the Joint Port Control Unit and the Revenue Assurance Compliance and Enforcement Team. Uh, then it goes ahead to talk about the fact that the withdrawal also forms part of efforts by the Ministry of National Security to enhance ongoing operations uh, towards the addressing the threats of violent extremism in view of the surge in activities of the same uh, littoral West African uh, states. Then we also do know that notwithstanding all of these uh, directives, including the withdrawal of personnel uh, from uh, the Temahabo, the Ministry of National Security shall provide the needed assistance to the relevant state agencies in the conduct of uh, surgical operations at the Temahabo when required. So that's the clear indications uh, and justifications being given by the National Security Ministry uh, in terms of withdrawing all of its personnel from the Tema Habo. But why take a decision uh, on such a critical uh, state infrastructure in such a manner? Joining us to help uh, look at the implications of this is Dr. Adam Bona. Uh, he's a security uh, expert um, helping us to understand what's happening at this point. So first of all, Dr. Bona, is this a good initiative by the uh, National Security Ministry? Blessed is it is me. This is Richard oh, Kumado. Right. So, uh, uh, Mr. Kumado, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, I was just um, trying to find out if this is a good initiative by uh, the National Security Ministry. It definitely. It depends on the level of the threat and the nature of the threat and the direction it's coming from. Uh, normally, when it comes to security risk assessment and mitigating a particular threat, the type and caliber of officers you needed is very important. Their deployment in what we call security positioning is also very important. But you raise a critical question, why should we remove national security operatives from Tema Harbor? If in the wisdom of the ministry, they realize that they are being redundant and their services will be needed elsewhere, I think we can grant them that. But comparing what they have done at Tema Harbor I think they've created a little bit of a mess for themselves. And in disguise of removing them, this particular communique will go a long way to see where they will be deployed and whether really their expertise will be needed there in terms of fighting the issue of terrorism. Uh, well, so, uh, but you know that the, the port as well is a critical uh, infrastructure. I mean, this is a place uh, which could even be a subject of uh, terrorist attacks. So why then take such a decision? Definitely. That is what is raising many questions. I don't see the reason they give in line with taking them out. I think that many of the boys they place at the Tema Harbor have no expertise at all in handling that place. And we are talking about border control. We are talking about border security management for which the port is one critical infrastructure. And if they have the needed expertise, I don't think they'll take them there. I think they are taking them under the guise of the mess they have created there. Many complaints against them. Attitude and expertise in doing particular job has become a questionable one. And I think they are taking them there with this particular disguise of a letter. My reasoning or my checks would have confirmed that we will not need the guys at the Mahabo to fight terrorism. We have the terrorism group in the police. We have them in the military, in customs and uh, immigration who are quick and they are well equipped to fight any threat of terrorism. And taking them out of harbor might be that they are calling them back to base or redeploy them onto some other places, but not necessary to fight terrorism. 
Are you then saying that basically the reasons we're getting from the National Security Ministry uh, could, may, may not entirely be the case and that there's more to what the reassignment that we're seeing? Definitely, because if the port is an entry point, you needed to guide your entry point. And if these guys are the first respondents, then you wouldn't take them out of the place unless they don't have the expertise and the critical infrastructure they needed to be effective. And I think that the soldiers, the police, the immigration, and customs are well pleased to do the job at Tema Harbor, and not just Tema Harbor, but many of our ports. And taking these guys out of Tema Harbor is just to save face, to say that they've created a bit of a mess, and they might be going back for retraining, or they might be redeploying to some other place, but not necessary as a first line of action to fight the threat of terrorism. Uh, but then there are claims also uh, that uh, some of these officials may have been involved in other activities uh, which compromises their integrity and perhaps that's why the ministry is taking such an action. Exactly, but they can't say that because if they should say that, they will come under fire. So they needed to create a decoy. And I think the statement in the letter is a clear decoy of why they are taking their men from there. In the first place, they don't need to be. They don't need to be deployed to the Tema Harbor. I have always hold a view that national security is a policy institution and you don't need operational team there. And ever since they started establishing operational units at national security, it has been one hell of a time for another. The disgrace and the shame of which has brought to national security is glare for everybody to see. It is time we readdress the issue of operational team at national security. Let national security be a coordinated center where high brains are needed for policy, formulation and assimilation and let the feed work guys go to the feed and do a good job. Uh, interesting point you're raising there. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Richard Kumado, for making that point. Thank Doctor, you. Uh, Dr. Adam Bonai is also a security analyst, is joining us now. Uh, Doc, so you're also joining at a time where we've seen the reasons that the National Security Ministry is giving uh, as a reason for which it is reassigning its personnel uh, from the Tema Havo. Do, do you agree with them, particularly when they say we need to reassign our men um, to the ongoing efforts to tackle violent extremism? Well, yes. Uh, well, I think, yeah, good, good uh, afternoon. I think I had my colleague uh, Richard on the other side. Uh, I, I agree. I have maintained that the operatives, largely operatives of the national security who are sent to most of these facilities, they go there uh, most often for their own selfish interests. If you ask me from where I sit and from my encounter with them, even if uh, you leave this country and you return, let's say you were in the U.S. or Britain or wherever, and you return, and you go through uh, immigration control and you are exiting, you'll see them telling you I'm national security, literally just trying to beg money from you. And so if you ask me, I would say that uh, we, we, if we have to reassign personnel to that place, let's say the ports, I mean, I would put it in general, the ports, Let's assign the best, the, the best of the best, you know, at the ports. But when we assign people who are largely associated with, uh, you know, uh, the political party or a political party, they come in uh, because they are supposed to be somebody's voice. And so they go there and some of them, not all of them, engage in extortion, bribery, and engaging in uh, you know, what they are not supposed to be doing. They rather do vice, what they are supposed to be doing. They do the, the reverse of what they are supposed to be doing, if you ask me, bless it. Uh, so so uh, what I'm getting from you both, I mean the experts, is that uh, you are highly doubtful that indeed these persons are being reassigned to help in the fight against terrorism. No, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, what... Uh, for what, what is, I mean, most of these people, what is even their level of training? Uh, they, if, if, if they were to submit a list of, uh, you know, the security operatives and you went through, you would realize that most of them are not even cut for the job they've been sent to go and do. So the job they, they are purporting to be doing as national security operatives, what level of training do they have? So I doubt, I don't want to believe uh, that is the reason. But there has been hue and cry over bribery and corruption, uh, extortion. Some of them, I mean, largely have been engaged in, you know, stealing, you know, daylight robbery. 
where you have containers that are getting missing left and right, go to the state warehouse. I mean, there are so many things that one cannot talk about. And so who, I mean, I think that the decision to redraw them, it doesn't matter wherever they are taking them to. Uh, it's a welcome news. If they are going to reassign uh, security operatives, i.e. national security operatives, let's assign career national security operatives. But when you assign non-career national security operatives who have no clue what intelligence government, you know, what a national security officer should be doing, you pose them to search, uh, you know, a security zone or a sensitive location. You are opening the country up for, you know, uh, for a lot of the bad things we have seen. Yeah, I have, I'm and, an and that's exactly that's exactly uh, the concern from from my point. The fact that since May three, we haven't had any re redeployment of national security personnel. I'm not too sure of the facts to such a sensitive critical infrastructure such as the Tema Habo. Uh, that that could be dangerous to us as a state, isn't it? I don't think it is dangerous. Remember. We have, uh, you know, immigration personnel are there. The customs uh, guys are there. We have the preventive and those who are in charge of revenue, they are there. And all of them have their own wing of, uh, you know, intelligence officers who are trained. And I say these personnel uh, most often are answerable to the state. You know, when you see a police officer, it doesn't matter how bad a police officer is. That police officer... You know, I mean, you will say 30% of the time will be answerable to the state. But when you have some of these national security operatives, who, even though you came in from, you know, the political party, something, you are supposed to be more answerable to the state. It is rather the other way around. Where he is being put there by a certain party executive, some party, something, something. And so he doesn't respect anybody. The portmaster, they don't respect anybody. They do as they want. Sometimes you clear your goose, and once the goose have left the port, you've gone through all the checks, you're on the motorway, they will follow you with motorbikes and stop you, and purport to want to now check your thing. And they do all that just to extort money from you. You don't want any delay. And so mine is that whoever I know that uh, the Minister of National Security is trying to rip bump and, you know, reset the national security as a ministry or secretariat which I think is welcome. They should go on that way so they can purge themselves of all the rot we've seen in the past. If they continue this way, then we would now begin to see a national security that is fit for purpose. But what we have seen largely has been people who are bonded together and, you know, most of them, as I speak, are paid on the table. They, are not, they don't have even their names on, on the, uh, the national payroll. They don't have their names there. They are paid... On table, if you pay people on table or under the table, what happens is that what you give them to do, they might not do it that way. And so mine is that whilst all these things are going, those two are good enough. Recruit them. Make them career, uh, you know, national security professionals. My, my colleague Richard on the other, I don't know whether he's still there. I mean, he's done, I mean, largely did some work with uh, the, the then BNI. And so mine is that there are people who would swear their oath and say, I'll protect, you know, the integrity of this country. But most of these people go, I mean, if you've ever imported something, ask 10 importers <coughs> in this country. Ask people who are, you know, coming through our, you know, Kotoka. And sometimes you have harassment, pure harassment from some operatives of this national security. And sometimes even challenging immigration and custom officials who are done with their work. But because some of this, I won't say all of them, some of these national security executives feel emboldened because whoever is bringing them there is some powerful person. And therefore, they can do as they want and nobody will ask them a question. These have gone a long way to damage the reputation of this country. It doesn't matter how hard the president or the national security minister, the interior, defense and co are doing. If these guys are not probably trained well and reassigned well, we are going to be running around in circles. Mm. And I'm grateful that you've been able to join us with your perspectives on this. Dr. Adam Buna, thank you for your time. Uh, well, we understand that the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, uh, they are welcoming the news. Uh, they're indicating that they support the decision by the National Security Ministry to uh, withdraw all of its personnel from the Tema Havo. The group argues uh, this latest directive will put an end to what they describe 
as the harassment of the business community. Well, Samson Asaki Awingubit is the executive secretary for the group. He will help us uh, understand what exactly the group means by that. Samson, it's good to see you this afternoon. Welcome to The Falls. Thank you very much. And uh, you say that you're being harassed by some of these officials and that by withdrawing all of this personnel, that will be the end to the story. Well, thank you very much. For, before I address your question, right. uh, you know that I am, I am in red, red, and I'm in black. I'm mourning because I'm from Boku. And uh, we have lost an illustrious son from our uh, our part of the the the, the country, so uh, uh, Honourable John Ndebugu, uh, in his blessed memory. Right. Um, we happen to come from one district, one constituency, right. and uh, it's a big loss to us. And so we are still mourning, and uh, that's why you see me in yeah. this. Uh, yeah. path. I thought that yes. we, we're definitely with you. Absolutely. Right. Um, yes. Back to the question. Um, it is true. Uh, just to add to what my friend Adam Bona have said, right. I strongly believe that if you go to the national security setup, there is a proper, purely professional national securities. They don't, you will not know them. You will probably be sleeping with them, so you will not know that you are sleeping with the national security. Elsewhere, and even in Ghana, we still have professional national security. Setup. It can be your next neighbor, you, you really know the work that he's doing. But what we are seeing, what we have been experiencing in, in our ports and, and in this country, a national security will not just come and tell that I am the national security. The way and manner a national security will behave, that's not how it, they are behaving at the port there. And so the redrawal of this party foot soldier, I call them party foot soldiers who are hungry, and the party after coming to power don't know where to put them and say, go to the port there. And when they get there, they are aim and objective in their mindset is I'm going to make wealth. But the question is, have you reported some of these cases to perhaps the Ghana Police Service or even the National Security Ministry or, or even the, the ports authorities? Talking about that? police service, right? The National Security Ghost guys are more powerful than the police. No, but but, but the point is that at least you they may can have, harass have a uniform yes. a uniform person and tell them our party is in government. What are you talking about? You heard what Adam Mona said. Adam Bonner is a security research analyst in this country. The gentleman he spoke to, I'm told he was working with BNL before, and he's, 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 an, he's a consultant now. All what they are saying is leading to what I'm telling you. These guys in the port there, there's no so respect to anybody. Even I'm quite sure if the director general even come, they can tell them you are not the one who brought us here. Even if the sector commander come, they can tell him that you are not the one who to tell them what to do. Mm. But the, the, the authority, Based on law, Ghana law, to assess someone who brings goods from outside the country, to assess it, go through valuation and classification, come out with the values for an importer to pay for duty, is custom, worldwide, globally. However, in the port there, we have custom themselves as security, we have custom preventive, and I told you we have post surveillance department from the custom, that even if I something as I can go there to claim my cargo today and did not pay or did not declare the right quantities and pay the rightful duty to the state, six months, one year down the lane, that arm in custom can come to you and say, we are coming to do post auditing. And then they, may, they will find you to pay additional duty to the state and even with penalty. Quite apart from that, before one is left to go out of the last gate of, at the port, we have what we call custom preventive. Now, the agent will enter, the, do the entry. It will mm -hmm. go to custom classification and values department at custom office. Values will come. You will go and pay the duty. You will proceed to the port, the terminal, where the container is sitting. There is also custom officer there who will come through what we call fiscal examination. So they will open the container. So if something like happened to bring this laptop, uh, mobile phone, right. it's about maybe 2,000 pieces in, in it. And I declared 1,005. If the cost, that officer will come with, that's why they only come with the book and red pen. To calculate, they take unit, unitization, they'll count it one by one, get the total quantity. So if they realize that on the BOE, the document that I'm bringing from Customs that claim that I paid duty and I'm coming to take the cargo, I've only declared 1,005, then they will, penalize, they will charge you the difference that we call, we don't call short collection. And based on just short collection, meaning you have watch and drop, you have not told the state officer the truth. So you, instead of 2,000, you declare 1,005. Then they will assess you that duty on the, the difference and charge you with penalty unit. Then you pay. 
you, when you pay finish and you are exceed, exiting, the, the preventive will then look at whether the exec, that officer at the field which assess, who assess you to see that truly what you paid is true and you are going out, will also look at through their cost, their system, and say you have done the right thing. If you haven't done the right thing, they will mark you back. Quite apart from that, we also have what we call joint team to do examination. So if you read the letter, you see that joint team. Yeah. The joint team is made up of the, the custom officials. We may need uh, food and drugs authority officers, probably uh, standards authority officials, custom themselves, and the BNI, and NACOP. Mm -hmm. So if the gentleman is talking about maybe if we leave a pot, if the national security withdraw, and, and we leave a pot in, in danger, in danger right. what? In the night, you have the Navy controlling the waters. In the evening and in the night as well, we have the marine policing. The police service has an arm mm. or a unit called marine, marine police. While the navies are there, the marine police are there, the, cost of the GPOJ has their own security. Besides that, the port is controlled by custom. It's a security zone. And there are military in the night as well at the port. So what are they talking about? So, so the addition Again, of the national security personnel is, is a waste of time, that you believe? It's a waste of time. And, and, and everywhere, national securities are not in thousands. It is an intelligence job. You don't need to be there in person to know what is happening. That's why the, the man talk about getting a professional, trained, well-vested person with in intelligence. And that's when you go to other jurisdictions, they pick these uh, ex-police officers, they pick ex-military officers, they pick intelligent officers. Mm. So even if you've got the national security set up now, if those who are working at the port or at our border with these party for soldiers, sometimes they'll push the, the professional self to your So if you meet some of the professionals, and ask, hey, in Pema you, you are transferring. So we use party in this country to destroy our, we have one of the best national security architecture in this country, but because of politics. And it's, when they talk of politics, it's only MPP, NDC, they support the country. They are the two parties. They are spoiling this country. So for the importers and exporters, as we wrap up on this conversation, what or how do you feel that we could improve um, the inspection unit there at the, at the hub? I guess that's part of the state. I even said so. I even, but even if, look, let's ask yourself. If something like I can clear my cargo from the port and I'm taking it to my warehouse and the national security stop the truck and the motorway and say, drive to Blue Gate, they are going to reassess you. One question is, do you have the technical complaint to do that? Are you going to take it there and now ask the custom officer that you don't trust to come and now do a reassessment? Yes, that's what is going to happen. So I said, why do we have them there? Because of lack of trust. I propose something somewhere. If you go to Nigeria, our counterpart, if they bring it, this LED TV, 2,000 pieces in the container, all what Nigerian authority knows is that it is 4,000 naira or it is 40,000 naira. So whether you bring a 40 con foot of container, whether it's a 10 thousand pieces inside, whether you brought it in 20 foot of container, all what you know is a 20 foot of container, this is the money. 40 foot of container, this is the money. That alone will even reduce the corruption that we are talking about. In the corruption in the port is not only about national security alone. Because sometimes if there's this sort of collection, an officer says, okay, okay, if you don't do something, then I will penalize to you. All right. And that happens every day. So I even, if the government actually even want, if the finance minister actually want to make the needed revenue that the government, the state is looking for, then let's learn what is happening in Nigeria. Are they getting the numbers? Are they getting the figures? Yes. Okay. So that it will stop this corruption. So everyone will, okay, 24 container you bought it, it, it with, with watches. It is $10,000 or 10,000 Ghana cities pay. I, I know that if I get to, it is frozen food, I'm bringing it, it's in, it's in the uh, 40 footer container. It is 80,000 I'm going to pay in Ghana. When I get there, you pay. Then th there will be transparency. But what is happening? Maybe after the national security, we'll, also, we'll touch the custom as well. Because there, there's also corruption there. Right. And I'm sure that uh, the conversation will definitely continue. I'm so grateful that you've been able to join us. That's, uh, but I, I think I told you I wanted to have an uh, appeal. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, okay, let's do that briefly. Yes, Br I brief, think. Just in just a minute. Yes, so I, I think I told you that I'm from Boku. Right. And what we heard from the two, three days or this week about what is happening with the killing of uh, our brothers and sisters in Boku, I am Samsonasaki. I am calling on the top hierarchy of my Pussy community in Boku. Yes, as I'm also calling our brothers, our side, I'm a man, right. that we, those who are here, we are educated. Our wives and our children are sleeping as and when they want to sleep. 
right. go out to do business as and when that they want to do. Okay. But our families who are in Boku cannot see by now they should be entering. Then they wake up six. So years. you want peace? They are building. We want peace. Right. Let us live united. And what does that mean? I'm a Kusasi man. I'm in Accra. I see my prince man. Like my is Salfo and Ari or Yirimiya. We greet each other, and when we get back to Boku, there is a different thing. So peace is all. We good. we need peace now in Boku. All right. Uh, and I'm grateful. Uh, that's uh, Samson Asaki Awingo with the Executive Secretary for the Importers and Exporters uh, Association uh, joining us here. Uh, we'll return shortly after this break. Please stay.